I'm Brian Miller, and thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of Thursday Thoughts, all about analog communication. My wonderful wife gifted me a turntable for the holidays, a record player. You know, one of those spinning things that plays scratchy music on an outdated medium. I love it. Yes, it's clunky. It has crackles, pops, and clicks. But with that territory comes something unexpected. Intentionality. So let's talk about active listening. Music has been an integral part of my life since before I have memories. I grew up listening to cassette tapes, then CDs, and after Napster killed the music industry, not music, just the industry, I went digital like everyone else. I've always heard vinyl was the best medium in which music has ever existed due to the wide dynamic range and the warm analog tone. And sure, I'm enjoying the increased dynamics and the warm tone, but that's not what has me so excited. For the first time in my life, or at least since I was a little kid, I'm listening to music with intention. Vinyl demands your complete focus. You have to turn the album over every 15 to 20 minutes or risk drilling a hole through it. Uh, there's no shuffle or pausing, going back, or skipping around to your favorite bits, so you've really got to engage if you're waiting to hear something specific. The unintended consequence? I feel like I'm hearing these songs for the very first time. Songs I've listened to dozens if not hundreds of times and believed I knew inside and out. I'm noticing random harmonies in this chorus and weird little guitar bits in that verse. I find myself grooving to songs that were never my favorites. I can't skip them, so I may as well find something in them to enjoy. There was a time when if you wanted to talk to someone, you had to physically show up in person. I remember walking to my friend's house and knocking on their door to see if they wanted to play, having no idea if they were even home, let alone available. Colleagues had to make the journey to each other's offices or desks. Families had to stay close or make an effort to visit regularly just in order to stay connected. And obviously, we can't do that at this moment. But let's be honest, we weren't doing that before the pandemic either. It used to be if someone gave you directions to their house, you had to listen really carefully or you would end up getting lost. You had to focus on a great story so you could recount it and retell it. The time you spent with loved ones was precious because it was fleeting. Slowly, and then rapidly, technology enabled us to do the miraculous, to communicate from anywhere, with anyone, at any time. But that freedom came at the cost of true connection. And now the very technology that enables us to stay in contact during a global pandemic superficially looks like connection, but it feels hollow like trying to quench a deep hunger with potato chips. Technology isn't going anywhere, and I don't think it should. There are plenty of upsides to a permanently connected digital world. The 2020 crisis, case in point. Let's just not conflate that with analog connection. It may not be as fast, clean, slick, or convenient, but it's human, and we need it. So let's talk about the new phenomenon that is being zoomed out. The trick, for the time being, is learning how to infuse human connection into a virtual world. We begin with the question, what do we miss about being in person? And I bet the answer is deeper than simply being able to physically poke your friend in the shoulder. There is a level of closeness associated with in-person interaction. Not physically, but emotionally. So I'll leave you with this. When was the last time on a video chat you asked a deep, meaningful, or difficult question? It's time to stop exchanging hollow pleasantries like, how are you? Hanging in there. Instead, let's connect with intention. For more on this topic, go check out my recent appearance on CT Live on NBC Connecticut. I was just on there five or six weeks ago, just before we went into full lockdown. Like, remember that week, the calm before the storm, that first week of March when we started hearing about something was happening, but nothing had actually happened yet? Not really. Well, during that week, I was on NBC Connecticut to discuss the loneliness epidemic and the increasing isolation that so many Americans in particular feel, but of course, folks all over the world. Well, that was apparently prescient. I've been called psychic ever since because just days later, we ended up in this full-scale 
lockdown. Well, I caught back up with Taylor at NBC Connecticut last week on her Instagram live stream to do a follow-up about how things are going now that we are a month, actually almost six weeks into this whole thing. So you can go check that out at the link in the description. Uh, Before I let you go, remember, I am doing a new video podcast with my buddy Adam Krutinger. It's called On to the Next Project. If you are a creative in any way and looking to build a living and a life with your passion, you definitely need to check out our weekly free form conversations on all things creativity, art, and the business of creativity and art. Uh, Definitely go check out that right here or at the link in the description. And having said that, my name is Brian Miller. Thanks so much for sticking with me. And always remember, our world is a shared experience. Every interaction is meaningful and every person you meet, even virtually, is important. We'll see you soon.